So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, one of the, the fourth key to anchoring, which is replicability. Short and sweet. How easy is it for you to replicate the anchor? Right? We talked in the last uh, video about uniqueness of anchor. Well, in addition to the anchor being unique, you want to make sure that you can actually fire it off. So um, I love Tony Robbins. I think he's awesome. But if you go to his events, oftentimes he'll have you set an anchor he, um, by using a huge movement of the physiology, which is good in the sense that it's unique and you're using your physiology and physiology is a way into state. It is. The difficulty there is most of my clients are business people and it's not appropriate for them to smack themselves on the chest and go, yeah, like that right before they go into a business meeting. Although it will certainly fire them up and although it is such a unique movement, you can associate strong intention emotions to it and your unconscious will pair that, certainly. But if it's not easy to replicate or contextually appropriate for you to replicate that, then you're not going to do it. So how can you anchor in a way that's going to be easy for you to replicate that anchor in the context? If so, for example, when I was um, training MMA, I could not put anchors on my fingers because I was wearing big boxing gloves, right? So what I did instead is I put my gloves on. I did a circle of excellence and I stepped into the state and I squeezed my fist, both of them, three times in the state as I was going into the peak rather. And I did that four or five times until the state was there. And then whenever I was about to start a sparring session, one, two, three, bam, into the state and I pulled it up. So you have to think about how am I going to use this anchor? When and where am I going to use the anchor? How is it going to be easy for me to fire it off in that context? In the next video, we're going to talk about another powerful key and the last most important key to anchoring.